Take it away, Kevin. Hi, Nina. Thank you so much. And hi, everybody. It's great to be back for another AIM webinar, this time with our friends from Microsoft. Now, chances are, if your organization is like most, you manage millions, if not billions, of files. And this unstructured content is not only growing in volume, but in variety as well. Certainly traditional content like invoices and contracts and correspondence, but also things like images and video and audio are all now becoming part of the information management uh, paradigm. And much of this content, as we know, is scattered across different silos and different applications, different file drawers across the enterprise. And it can be a struggle to identify and classify and organize this content at scale. Organizations are under this kind of pressure to, in, to improve productivity and reduce costs and drive business value, all while addressing these pressing compliance and security and data management needs. Often our current information methods and techniques um, can fall short, and we are here to examine one potential solution, Microsoft Syntax, a new content AI solution. Content AI is a category of technology solutions that utilize cloud and AI advancements to transform how content is created, processed, and discovered. And that's what we'll explore today with our guests from Microsoft. But before I formally introduce our guests today, I do want to mention again what Nina was mentioning earlier, that we'd like to hear from you too. In the later part of the event today, we will open it up to questions, so please uh, pose them throughout our session today. We'll try to get as many on board during the Q&A segment as we can. Just use the chat and Q&A features, and we'll try to get to those and get them into our discussion. We want to hear from you. And uh, so with all of that, let me introduce our two great guests today for today's webinar. Starting with Lori Ellis. Lori is a principal customer experience program manager at Microsoft. She works with, cust with customers to share best practices and accelerate their adoption of new and emerging technologies like Syntax. Also with us today is James Eccles. James is a senior customer experience program manager. His focus is on making Microsoft Syntax customers successful and using the lessons learned to inform product development and the adoption of best practices. So James and Lori, welcome to the event today. Thank you for being with us. Lori, I'll start with you. Um, tell us more about Microsoft Syntax. Happy to. Thank you for having us. It's great to be here. Um, James and I sit in, in a really unique position in the engineering org that works on Syntax. And what's really great about that is that we're customer experience PMs. So we sit very closely and we are organizationally part of engineering, but we spend all of our time working with customers. And in that role, we're responsible for helping customers to adopt Syntax. Starting about a year ago, we started working one-on-one -on -one with customers, but then also through preview programs and our role is really to drive content, to drive best practices, but also we do a lot to bring that direct user feedback directly from the business to the engineering team. What are blockers, what are inhibitors, what are accelerators to help customers really adopt the content? So um, James, if you wanna go one step further, I think on the slides, there we go. So just to sort of reiterate some numbers around uh, what you were hearing in the introduction, Microsoft recognizes that we are really faced with a ton of content. M365 service today on, on a daily basis gets 1.6 billion documents added to the service. And that is just an overwhelmingly large amount of content. And you can imagine that content sits in all sorts of forms and, and locations within the service. But what this really recognizes and, and leads to is that um, an industry number that states that 130 billion terabytes of unstructured content will be added to the service by 2025. And this represents a 10 times growth over the last five years versus what we were seeing in the past. And it's just exponential. The growth pattern is just going up uh, sort of unchecked. And so what Syntex is attempting to do is to help the customers with all of this content and also with the 46 billion that they're spending yearly to store and manage this content. And this content sits in silos. This content is sometimes still needs to be digitized. We work with customers that still have boxes of paper 
that they need to, to get rid of. But then also once all that content is in the service, how do you reuse it? How do you find it? How do you make sense of what you have? And how can you create new content from it quite easily? So what we've done is taken what, what was known in the market as SharePoint syntax, and we really have expanded it. And we've created this new category called content AI. And what we're doing is we're bringing together tech from a number of different places. This is including security, compliance, our power platform and business automation. It's including um, everything from SharePoint, but beyond SharePoint to the other apps within the M365 space as well. We call this category content AI. And at the heart of it is some new innovation and in technology that is using AI to help make sense of this content. We use machine teaching to help us classify, organize, and extract the content. Then we allow things like modern templates and creation of new content. And then again, being able to add that compliance, sensitivity labels, retention labels, and so forth. And then analytics that help you understand what you have. And then once you have all of that content, one of the key scenarios that we work on is retrieving and searching and finding that content. Fast, easy, with all of that extracted data, using the AI to really lead you to stronger search solutions. And James is gonna talk through some of the features, but really just wanted to set the stage here of, of what we consider the content AI. So it, at the Ignite conference this fall, we actually rebranded SharePoint Syntax as Microsoft Syntax. And what's happened is it's grown out of the use of SharePoint, but it's expanded to all of these other products as well. And the capabilities have really come together in a way that let you do end-to-end -end business scenarios and business uh, value, essentially. So you can see here, we're building on both Microsoft 365, but we also use Azure components. We use some of the the tech and the AI that is sitting in Azure, and we've incorporated that directly into Syntax. We are leveraging Microsoft Purview. So again, around that compliance, the security, the things that, that your tenant administrators and your business administrators want to do to ensure that you're setting the right light type of compliance and security and retention on those policies and, and on those documents and that content itself. And then really leveraging the power platform. Because at the end of the day, it's one thing to help figure out what you want to do with that content. It's another thing then to drive that into your end-to-end -end business process flow. I was working with a customer yesterday who um, is automating a bunch of content and really building out a new document management system for their HR division. And we were talking about, you know, they have 150 types of content and how many you know, models or classifications might they need? What kinds of metadata they might they need to extract? And really at the heart of it though, was what they'll do business process wise with it. Is the core around retrieval? Is it around driving approvals? Is it around generating new offer letters? Is it around organizing visa content? And the power platform is the key to really tie a lot of that automation directly into it. And some of that automation is available in SharePoint, in the, in the document libraries and the sites that customers use today. And a lot of it is extensible with low code solutions that allow you to integrate the Power Platform directly into the Syntax features. So these are the three key areas, and I'm going to hand this over to James to sort of drill into each of them, but we've really focused this list of 20 plus feature areas that span across a broad range of features into these three key uh, divisions or areas. One is enhance it. How do you understand what you have? How do you assemble new content? How do you discover and reuse it in that connect section? And then how do you manage that content? How do you analyze it, protect it? make sense of it. And in some cases, maybe you want to archive it. You want to look at that document life cycle end to end. So I'm going to hand it over to James to drill into these in a little more detail. Great. Thanks, Laurie. And as Laurie describes, there's a huge breadth of features that come uh, today within Microsoft Syntex and will be added over the next year. And in the limited amount of time we've got, I'm not going to be able to uh, take you through each of them in depth. But what we want to give you as part of this webinar is really a sense of what the map of these features are. What are the problems we're looking to solve and what are the capabilities we're bringing to, to our customers like yourselves through, um, through Microsoft Syntax. And we use these three 
feature areas of enhance, connect and manage really as logical groupings of the capabilities within Microsoft syntax. Um, and I'll step through each of these and, and describe um, some of the uh, core capabilities across each of them. So first in enhance, which um, is uh, the part of the product which has been established for the, um, for the longest. Um, so Laurie mentioned that we rebranded SharePoint Syntax in the fall to become Microsoft Syntax. And several of these capabilities have been within uh, the previous SharePoint Syntax portfolio. And the first thing is in our document processing component. So within our document processing, we have um, various low code and no code AI models, which will allow you to understand, classify and tag content across your SharePoint environment. And this is aimed at um, information managers, but also business users to be able to understand and unlock the knowledge, the, the meaning that was within their files in these ever increasing corpuses of data. Some of the features which are coming up over the coming months are um, building on this foundation that we have of being able to understand content. So being able to translate and summarize content, for example. And I'll show a, show a brief uh, video example of summarization in a few moments. Now within Enhance, we not only recognize that you need to understand incoming content, or archives of content that you have today, but also there's an important part of the content lifecycle where new files are being generated, um, responses to incoming content. Um, so with our feature content assembly, um, you can use content um, stored within SharePoint to generate new files, um, being able to do that at scale um, and give you that repeatable content generation experience. And something Kevin mentioned during the introduction, the, the, the type of content that we all have to deal with as information managers is changing uh, over time. It's no longer just traditional things like contracts, invoices, uh, text-based files. Increasingly, image and video content is becoming an important part of uh, our corpuses of data. And so within Syntex, um, we're bringing additional AI capabilities to allow you to extract meaning from images. So that could be through um, image tagging of what are the contents of pictures. It could be through um, OCR within image files, be they stored within SharePoint or other parts of M365. So let me show you a brief uh, video demo of some of the features coming here. So um, in this case, uh, the AI generated summaries. And we're looking right now at a, uh, a file that I've stored in SharePoint Online. And on the right hand side, you'll see the syntax has generated various summaries of what's important within this document. Um, and clicking on any of those summary phrases will jump me down to the specific section within that document. I'm sure we're all used to the feeling right now of the incoming flood of information we all have to process and being able to identify what's important, what's meaningful within those documents, um, allow us to do that triage and focus our attention in the right place is increasingly critical. Moving on to the connect pillar, and this is really where we think about how to um, lean on processes um, around the content that we have within, um, within uh, being handled by Microsoft Syntax. Um, the first element we bring here is some improved um, uh, improved intelligence through Microsoft Search. So using deep learning models, using large language models to understand the meaning within our content and allow us to have more enriched search experiences. So not limited to keyword searching, but really getting into the semantics, getting into the meaning of a search query and bringing back the most relevant content um, that I have um, within my corpus. Thinking about e-signatures as part of our document lifecycle processes frequently with um, document types such as contracts um, and so on, we need to have um, a, a robust e-signature process associated with them. And today you might be using some of our partner technologies through things like DocuSign or Adobe Sign 
and we want to enhance the capabilities of those partner solutions through Microsoft Syntex, but also provide our own first party e-signature solution as part of M365, allowing you to keep content within the compliance boundary of M365 once it's completed its signing, um, its signing life cycle, not having to move it to another repository and be managed elsewhere. Through simple content rules, we want to give you the ability to build simple um, business processes. Now we we all know the uh, hopefully all know the power of the Power Platform and things like Power Automate and some of the rich experiences that can be built through that automation engine. Syntax content rules really complement that with um, a lower bar of uh, complexity and lower entry point. Um, so simple rules such as moving files based on a classification. Um, or a piece of metadata that's been automatically extracted through AI, being able to copy or move a file. As part of the Connect pillar, we also have a number of solution accelerators. Um, so in market today, we have a contracts management solution accelerator uh, coming very soon in the new year. We'll also be one added for accounts payable. And think of these as ways to contextualize all of these features within Microsoft Syntax to solve a specific business problem. So in the case of contracts management, thinking about those incoming and outgoing processes around handling a contract um, and how we can use our solution accelerators to give you a starting point of how to handle those in an efficient manner. And then finally, um, integrations across M365. So um, already today, we integrate deeply with Power Automate, with AI Builder, with the broader Power Platform, including Power Apps and um, Power BI. But allowing you to um, glean insights and drive processes with data that we can um, extract automatically from content. And I'll show you a brief demo now of uh, the e-signature solution, which will be coming um, next year. So here you see we are um, looking at a, a file contract that needs to be signed. And we have the option not only of using partner solutions through Adobe Sign or DocuSign, but also using the first party Syntex e-signature solution. And these allow signature fields uh, to be added to the document in browser, no particular, uh, no additional plugin or um, client needed. Um, and these can then be electronically signed in context where the files are stored in SharePoint online um, and routed for approval using Outlook and Teams the familiar tools that many of us are using. And last but by no means least, the manage pillar of features. And manage is um, Excuse me. Um, the managed capabilities are thinking about um, how we control the life cycle of our repositories um, that we're storing content in M365 and how we're managing the increasing scope and scale of um, the SharePoint estates that uh, many of us have to, um, have to look after. So the first um, in this section is uh, a feature called Syntax Backup. So today, Microsoft 365 is already a highly resilient service, and we use various uh, various techniques to make sure your data is secure at all time and um, give all customers um, the ability to restore from backups. However, there are always scenarios where perhaps a customer would want to take even more stringent um, backup schedules on their content. I'm sure we've all been um, in the situation where um, someone senior in our business has deleted a file um, maybe a year, maybe two years ago, but suddenly that file needs to be restored from a backup for that uh, for that individual. Um, and what Syntex Backup allows us to do is to set more granular backup schedules on either repositories or location um, or individuals within our business. So if we need to have a more um, long-standing um, backup history, we can complete that with this feature. Related to this is our Syntex Archive feature. So this is about being able to store your M365 content on lower cost storage, on colder storage uh, for content that just needs to be maintained and stored, but doesn't necessarily need to be daily 
um, accessed on a daily basis. So rather than exporting content and moving it to an external archive, so some perhaps some um, cloud blob storage, um, we're giving you the capability to store your content um, at a lower cost within the M365 compliance boundary. So um, lowering our total cost of storage ownership, but maintaining tools like e-discovery search and compliance search without having to look at separate locations. And finally, um, we're adding some advanced management capabilities. So um, I'm sure many of you over the past couple of years have um, been in the situation where you've noticed the number of SharePoint sites or Microsoft Teams that you're having to interact with grow exponentially. And from an administration and a management perspective, this causes some um, some challenges. You know, if, if the number of SharePoint sites that you're having to manage and monitor and maintain is increasing, um, um, that um, uh, that is only adding to the burden of those administration teams. So in here, we're bringing the power of AI to help you understand what content needs to be maintained, what repositories need to be maintained, and what could be um, what could be removed or deleted. Um, so we have various AI-driven policies here. I'll show you an example in a moment of an inactive sites policy. But the idea here is to give you a set of insights and capabilities to take action on your content at the increasing scale that we all have to manage. So here in this demo, we'll show you um, a report which is showing the inactive sites that are currently on our environment and allowing us to clean up those sites um, based on uh, based on our policy. In addition, though, perhaps we want to make a choice to say that any sites which have been labeled as highly confidential, even if they're inactive, shouldn't be removed automatically. Um, and what we can do for these instead is push them to an archive, make sure that although they are not being used, they can be preserved in the case that we need to do a compliance search in the future. Now with that, um, I've taken you through a whistle-stop tour of the features that are coming or here today with Microsoft Syntex, but I wanna make it real. So let's talk um, through a couple of customer um, examples of how they're using Microsoft Syntex today to make the information management more effective. And I'll hand over to Laurie to start us off with TaylorMade. Yeah. So um, many of you may recognize TaylorMade. They're one of the world's leading golf companies. They, they make golf supplies. And we worked with them and Syntex really um, within their legal department. So their attorneys were actually in the trademark and patent area, doing a lot of manual digging through documentation to find the information that was needed and to extract it for use. And so being able to use some of the in-market features that are available today in the document processing space, they were able to classify these documents and then extract the data that they needed to save that manual effort and really allow those attorneys to focus on the things that are more um, attuned to the kinds of things that they want to do to get, get ahead in the business. And so avoiding having to do that manual effort of opening documents, moving them around, figuring out where they need to be stored and so forth, really drove dramatic cost savings for them. And that's something that a lot of our customers are doing, in fact. And one of the other scenarios that, that I'm working on with the customer is they literally have 100,000 support contracts. And in order to, when an issue came up with a particular customer to understand any specific support terms that might have been set with that customer, they were actually having to go and locate that contract, find the extracted information, and then take action on it. By setting up this document processing models to actually extract the information that they need, and in some cases, they already maintain corporate taxonomies or term sets that, that will actually map to their preferred terms so that they're more findable as well, um, allows them to take what would look like a normal out-of-the-box SharePoint document library that gave you very little information about the files stored there. It will show the file name, the person who uploaded or last modified it and a date, and it allows them to extract and add all of these additional columns of information through this document processing using the machine teaching and the AI. And that allows them, A, to find 
information very quickly, just through this grid view, they're able to locate it manually, but it also allows them to do some really interesting things with our metadata search, our content query, where they then can, um, based on these content types and these extra fields that they're extracting, are then able to search very precisely to find the information that they're looking for. And that's a very common thing that we've worked with a number of customers on, including TaylorMade, um, to ensure that that content is being used, found. And then in some cases, customers will take that and create new content from it. So you can imagine a flow where um, you are, uh, have put an RFP out and you're getting bids from a number of customers. All of those bids can come in and you can extract the pertinent data from the bids, even if the bids don't always look the same. The vendors who may be submitting the bids may have different formats, but you can find the extracted information, have the AI pull that out, and you can very quickly compare 50 different uh, bids at once through that UI and then search for, for particular pieces that you might want. And then at the end of the day, you also can use that extracted information to generate letters back to those vendors, either giving them the business and starting the contract process, or maybe just generating a letter saying, thank you for your bid. Uh, we appreciate it and, and allow you to sort of move on to the, to the project phase. So there is a video that you can go out to on the site. There's a link here. You can watch TaylorMade talk firsthand about how their legal department uh, was leveraging Syntex. Let's move to a second use case, which is a company called Aracon. They are a worldwide engineering firm. Uh, the folks that I'm working with are in Australia, um, an amazing team of knowledge managers. And really what they wanted to do is every time a new project spun up, a new engineering project spun up, they actually create a site collection within a site within SharePoint. And what they wanted to do furthermore is ensure that when that new site gets spun up, that the site owner has everything that they need to be successful, including some of those document processing models and that setup of that document library to be pre-plumbed. And so they're actually using our PMP code in their site creation process to automatically apply those models and make sure that they're there when the brand new site gets created and the project kicks off. And in this case, their content is actually CAD files. And what they were doing is there's block data at the bottom of the CAD files that has information about that particular drawing, a lot of structural drawings, you know, bridges, buildings, and so forth. And they were adding it to the CAD file. And then when they uploaded it to SharePoint at before Syntax, they were requiring that those engineers doing that work to re-enter that data in SharePoint so that they could capture it. These models have removed that entire step. What that allows them to do is in, they can build their CAD drawing, they can add that block data, and we've built a model with them to ensure that when that dot data gets uploaded, that CAD file, we actually automatically extract that metadata. This allows them to quickly find them. They can reuse them across projects and, and really has enhanced the time savings of you know, these team members going, oh, I have to re-enter this data again. We've removed that from that, and it's been automated so that it is something that is seamless to those project engineers. They don't have to think about it. It's been managed sort of centrally by the business team and the knowledge management team to do that. And so that's been a, a fun project to work on. Uh, we also had some conversations about other types of documents that they have, um, whether it's uh, CVs. So if you're assigning an engineer to an engineering project, you may want to know what their credentials are. And if you have these CVs, these files on your engineers, you might want to extract some of these, these um, either certifications or qualifications and be able to find them very quickly so that you can identify the best candidates for that project. So um, definitely applicability across these two different areas. We've worked with other types of companies like retail. Um, a lot of times this has to do with invoicing, um, customers who have vendors that run price promotions or changes and have a lot of documentation that goes back and forth to the vendors. Um, there's a lot of people doing manual data entry there. Um, I have another customer who has auction uh, documentation. These are invoices from auction items, and they're using Syntex to automatically extract that data and avoid that data entry. And uh, there's other things that you can do with it at the same time. First, you're avoiding any manual um, data entry mistakes because you're having the system automate and pull it. 
And the second is that they also are applying different policies based on the content. So part of that could be the business workflow to automatically approve at certain numbers, but another part of it is retention. So you can set policies for how long you want that data to be retained. You also, um, especially if it's in a sensitive area like HR, can set sensitivity labels that will automatically be applied when that content is uploaded. So um, all of these are business processes where we're mainly starting with the features that are in the market today, the document processing, the enhanced search, the content assembly, but all of those new features that James was talking about around translation, around um, summarization, around e-signature are really going to enhance the end-to-end -end business content flow that we're working on with these customers. And so um, I was working with a, a customer the other day that had content in, I think, 10 different languages, and they're very much looking forward to the ability to do automatic translation of that content so that teams that are speaking in different languages can still find and use that content and with a click of a button do that translation. And so we're very excited to continue to extend that out and really uh, the sky's the limit as far as the customer scenarios go, and you'll see us produce more and more of these case studies and these real world examples of how customers are using our, our services and these features. Uh, this slide, I won't, I won't go through everything in detail, but James reviewed a lot of these features. This slide is really showing you for those three areas that we focused on what's available now and what's available soon and what's coming in 2023. And so, um, we are working hard on all of these. A few of these are in private preview. We work closely with our customers who want to um, give us a lot of feedback on these features as they get developed as well. And so um, some of the new ones that I'm working on with customers now, um, James mentioned content rules, the ability that when you upload content based on that classification and that metadata that's extracted, you may wanna notify somebody very easy with no automated flow needed at all. It's really just a simple few clicks in the UI. I think at this point, I'll leave the slide up and I'm sure there's a lot of questions that are probably coming through. Also note that, that please go to our site, this, this aka.ms syntax uh, forward slash start. We also have an adoption hub out there and we welcome a bunch of feedback on that. We're developing more and more use cases, more and more walkthroughs more um, learning materials that will help you if you're ready to deploy this and use this within your company. And then we have an active blog that uh, we actually have December updates that we're finalizing now and should be up any day now um, to talk about all of these new features as they come and changes to existing features to enhance and continue to improve them uh, as new AI capabilities come along. That is Lori Ellis joined with James Eccles from Microsoft. We've been talking about Microsoft Syntax. Thank you, Lori, and thank you, James, for your comments today. At this point, I do open it up for uh, our questions and, uh, and answer period today. We have had a number of questions coming in, Lori and James, from the audience during the session today. And thank you, everyone, for your participation. I'm going to try to get to as many as I can and get them uh, to them in roughly um, uh, first come first serve uh, order and certainly Hans has been asking about is it possible to use Microsoft Syntax in with other information management per, uh, platforms he says the thing is that most enterprises do have several content silos which con content is stored it would help if a system like Syntax could connect those different silos Tell us a little bit more about Syntax and its interoperability with other platforms. Yeah, James, do you want to take that or would you like me to speak to it? Sure. Um, so we absolutely uh, uh, love hearing that question, Hans. You know, it's not, you're not, not the first person to ask that question. It is absolutely a common piece of feedback we get. The, the reality of a modern enterprise is that there are many repositories across, um, uh, across the board that need to be managed. As Syntex, uh, Microsoft Syntex exists today, our focus is on the M365 layer. So we're expanding out the scope from just beyond SharePoint Online to other components of M365. So things like um, Microsoft Teams, Exchange, um, T, um, said Teams, uh, Stream, video content, and so on. But absolutely, 
in our sites is thinking beyond the M365 boundary, how we can um, use some of these tools to enhance, to manage, to connect outside of the, um, the existing ecosystem. So as the product exists today, um, we are limited to M365, but this is absolutely an area we want to grow in. Andre asks, what in general would be the half-life of content? In other words, what's your opinion? How long is content valuable? Uh, I think that varies by industry, for sure. Um, it also varies on uh, government regulatory requirements for storage of content and so forth. What I've seen in working with customers recently, most of them are focused on incoming content and probably about a year back. But I, I hesitate to give a hard and fast rule of, of how, uh, how far back that needs to go. For example, that contract repository, um, they care about that content for the life of those contracts. So those contracts could vary from a year to three years. And so it really is highly dependent on the content and, again, the regulatory and compliance requirements of your industry. Um, I would um, add on to that, Laurie. The thing yeah. that I, I encounter most with customers, um, to boil it down, is fear. Um, you know, they re <laughs> retain content because they don't know what's there. Therefore, the safest thing to many businesses is to, well, we'll keep it just in case. And one of the great strengths of a solution like Microsoft Syntex is it allows you to understand what you have in your corpus of data, to know what is the meaningful half-life of specific types of content. You know, to Laurie's point, thinking about um, uh, even something as simple as contracts, you know, a solution like Syntex will allow you to identify first where the contract may be within your corpus of data and then start to extract some intelligence about them you know what's the effective date of that contract when does the contract expire um, being able to have those data points allows you to make an intelligent decision on understanding if a contract is still valid or whether it needs to be retained uh, for a certain period after its um, its own life cycle now, James, you were describing the e-signature process uh, a while back, and we did have a question about the e-signature feature and whether or not it completed the process by converting the signed file into a PDFA. I assume that's so. Is that correct? So um, uh, with the uh, e-signature solution, um, so that will be something which will be released later or, or midway during 2023. And um, our um, our goal is to try and maintain as much as possible the um, uh, fidelity of the content itself. So not to duplicate or convert anything where we don't have to. Um, so we're still working through some of the specific implementation details there, but that is our guiding principle. We don't want to be duplicating content to give you additional things to manage um, um, uh, if we don't have to. So not necessarily is the answer. Correct. Okay, very good. Tyler asks if Syntex backup is considered a disaster recovery option in the case of ransomware. Uh, absolutely. Yep. Um, so, you know, um, we have various features with M365 today that can be useful in, in ransomware scenarios. If, for example, the OneDrive file restore feature, which allow you to go back on a timeline. Um, but certainly one of the key scenarios the backup feature is looking for looking at is um, is ransomware scenarios. Is Syntex able to conduct a search uh, analytics classification process within mailbox to say review a mailbox, identify attachments that are, say, contracts, for example, retrieve and store attachments in a specific location and then do other document processing is is that possible that level of management within mailboxes so today we do have customers who will extract attachments from email using a power automate flow and then use syntax to classify and um, do that work um, I think in the future, you'll see us do more and more with email and with email attachments. But today, customers who do that will, will typically extract the attachment and uh, then make use of it with syntax. But you're going to see us do more and more with content stored within emails in the future. Okay, very good. Elizabeth 
asks about purview. How does this work with purview for records compliance and implementing retention policies? Oh, that's a great question. I love that question. There's yeah. two aspects to think of here. So the first is within syntax document processing models, you can use the classification engine to apply a retention label directly. So let's say a file has been identified as a contract and your contract model includes a retention label, you can use the classification to apply it. But where I get really excited is where we have these models extracting metadata, you can use those to drive your sophisticated policies from the compliance center in purview. So for example, um, maybe we need to retain contracts for different durations if they are um, if their jurisdiction is in different states. Um, mm. Different states may have different regulations associated with them. So being able to extract that data allows you to build a very granular retention policy and then automate the application of that policy. Can Syntex work within Dynamics 365? Not today. So, so today, if, if you automated a way to pull data out of it, um, there might be a way to do that. James, I don't know if you've had any examples of direct interaction with Dynamics. I know it's something that has been discussed. Um, and you mentioned at the end of your talk about integration uh, with with other apps, but I'm not aware of any customers using Dynamics directly with Syntex today. Are you? Okay. C okay, correct. But again, to come back to my my earlier point, you know, we we absolutely acknowledge that um, everything doesn't live in SharePoint. As much as that repository is growing right. for most organizations, you know, having things like access to content or the ability to manage content that exists in Dynamics or in third party repositories is absolutely on our roadmap. All right. Jamie asks, is it possible to integrate a model configured in form recognizer to syntax? That's we another great that. question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and actually, most of the technology that syntax is built from um, comes from other parts of Microsoft. So, for example, our document processing models are built on Azure Forms Recognizer. And if you think, um, um, we put this another way. One of the ways we're trying to position this technology is depending on who our audience is within a customer. If you're a professional developer, going through Azure, going through the APIs in Azure Forms Recognizer is probably the most efficient way for you to work. Um, if you are um, a citizen developer, our platform may be the best place for you. But if you are an information manager or you're a business user working in content in M365 today, Syntex is how we want to deliver those capabilities to you. Um, so all of those three um, options I mentioned are using the same underlying technical layer, but we're giving the, the best flavor of that tool to the right audience at the right time. Yeah, I think, I think for most of our customers, when we're working directly with the business users, they are fairly familiar with the SharePoint document library experience with SharePoint sites. And having all of the syntax capabilities and, for example, the types of models that leverage Forms Recognizer directly in that document library experience that they use every day is really the power of syntax. Mm -hmm. And we walk you through step by step how to how to use those models and how how to decide what to extract and so forth in terms of the process that you use. And also, you can reapply them and share them across sites. So there's, there's two ways that you can approach it. You can have business users who create very localized models that are pertinent to a set of content that they might have. But we also have this notion of content centers, which are enterprise models. And so you can approach it from a centralized perspective where you are publishing out models from a centralized content center or a group of them. Maybe you still have a need to have some governance in terms of, of uh, not having too much overlap. But but really, to James's point, um, Forms Recognizer is absolutely at the heart of the tech, but we want business users to, to stay within the familiarity of SharePoint and what they're used to and expand that capability um, without making them entirely leave if, if they don't want to. And mm -hmm. so, um, but again, giving you the power of those developers and IT admins who or, or uh, power platform admins who may want to go out and extend to new scenarios as well. They're more custom. We are here today with Lori Ellis, Principal Customer Experience Program Manager at Microsoft. Also, James Eccles, Senior Customer Experience Program Manager, Microsoft. We're talking about Microsoft Syntax and Content AI. And thanks, everyone, for your comments and questions here today. This has been great. They're 
continuing to come in, Lori and James. So while we have the time together, I will be trying to pose everyone's questions if possible. And we have another one here that asks, would Syntex be able to identify libraries or SP repositories that specifically hold records and then apply a security setting that can protect sites with record libraries attached from being deleted or entirely remove them from Avpoint renewal props? So there's a few uh, a few clauses to that statement uh, for that question, <laughs> but I think that's a you know it's it's an interesting scenario to walk through, and I think in principle, if I understood it correctly, then then yes, but not limited to Microsoft syntax. I think some of that more uh, complex scenarios of how you're handling records is really one of these nice meeting grounds of where Microsoft Syntex plus Microsoft Purview gives you this breadth of capability to really have these sophisticated content life cycles. So I um, I wouldn't say that Microsoft Syntex is the end-to-end -end solution for your problem um, or, or for your scenario, but it's certainly a, a valuable component to give you the intelligence to make those decisions. I would, I would also say maybe this is a good time to put a plug in, James, for the syntax assessment tool that we have, which is a open source tool out on GitHub that, while not exactly the scenario you're asking about, you can run this from the client side against a SharePoint environment and get some information about what kinds of content that you have in the environment. You can run this against a few sites or you can run it much more broadly. But what this will do is it will iterate through and look at the metadata about the files. It doesn't open the files themselves, but it will look at the data about the files. And then it produces a series of Power BI reports that tell you about your document libraries that have a lot of content in them, what types of content site types are in use and that sort of thing. And it's a way that oftentimes when we're working with customers early on, if they have a lot of content in SharePoint that they're trying to reason over, it's a useful tool to get some intelligence about what you have as a starting point. And um, it, it, it won't do every scenario, as you said, there were a lot of clauses there, but it, you might wanna check that out on GitHub as well and uh, see if it can give you some good ideas for how Syntex might, might help you. Andre asks, are Excel files extractable? Was it not possible in SharePoint syntax from his memory? What about Excel? Absolutely, it's possible to extract from Excel. Now, I will heavily caveat by that, by Excel isn't the easiest thing to extract from if you're using some of the tools in syntax. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you were to present in front of me a simple letter or an invoice, um, you'll be able to train a model more simply there. But um, absolutely, our technology will extract text from Excel files and allow you to, to train a model to extract values from them. Now, my, my question back would be, if you think about um, intelligent document processing, the, the real driver here would be how consistent are Excel files that you have that would follow the same patterns and behaviors and rules for you to consistently extract across them? Um, so, so simple answer is yes. Um, but the slippery uh, consultant in me wants to say, well, it depends. <laughs> Always, I think, right? I think it also depends on, you know, sort of the, the horizontal, vertical axes and how the, the file's formatted, but, but James is spot on. Jamie's asking, in the near future, will they expand their coverage to plan formats, for example, developed in AutoCAD? Yeah. Um, I, I might have to lean on Sean or from our engineering team to see if he has any, any direct knowledge of that. But I, I can tell you that in working with customers who have AutoCAD files, it is able to extract the block text in the descriptors about the drawings. And so we, we are not actually at this point extracting um, text in, within the drawings themselves. But if you have block text on it, uh, we are definitely able to extract that data from it. Yeah, and typically for those scenarios that Laurie's describing, um, those are for customers who are um, operating in a CAD environment in one location and then exporting PDFs into SharePoint. Yeah. You're typically with a with a CAD file. It is not a single file; it's a collection of multiple files in a container. So it is not a, a, a single thing that can be processed. But what we see most commonly is engineering firms have a engineering collaborative system where they're doing the uh, CAD file production. And then for a majority of the remainder of their audience, they're exporting PDFs 
um, out of that environment into SharePoint where they can be processed, categorized, classified, and so on. Right. Well, Laurie and James, it's all about integration today, isn't it? Um, one last question here before we start to close up, and certainly we have a few more minutes if you have any final questions or comments for Laurie and James today, but Syntex, does Syntex have a migration tool to migrate data and images from a document manager from another brand? Oh, that's a great question. And really, um, the way I would respond to this is think of Syntex as a set of capabilities within M365 rather than a new location or a new repository. Um, so if we think about migration, the migration exercise you'd be going through would be to move content into SharePoint Online, into M365. And there's tools from Microsoft to help you do that. Um, there's tools from our rich partner ecosystem to help you do that as well, as well as partners who can um, help from a more advisory perspective. So um, mm -hmm. really don't think of Syntex as a new location to go to. Think of Syntex as a separate set of capabilities that sit on top of um, M365. During this space that they're working with you. Sorry, I, I, I lost your audio there for a second. Yeah, we lost the first part. What about other partners working in this space ah. with you and how can we leverage that third party environment to really make the most out of the system itself? Yeah, we, ha we have a rich ecosystem, as James mentioned, and there is a content AI partner program. And so if you go to the, the resource and the link that was provided, you'll see information about that. And we have launch partners and different tiers of support and uh, the customers that James and I work with often have a partner involved in the deployment. And so there's some great partners out there that are um, solution providers and will work directly with customers on their scenarios and their solutions. And then, of course, uh, other types of partners that are ISBs that are building solutions that tie into the different features. So um, definitely check out the Content AI Partner Program, and that way you'll know that these are partners that are working directly with Microsoft, have a direct line to engineering, and um, have a lot of experience with Syntex now at this point. Very good. That is Lori Ellis, Principal Customer Experience Program Manager, and James Eccles, Senior Customer Experience Program Manager at Microsoft. Lori and James, thank you so much for being with us today and for your comments. Thank you for having us. Thank you. All right. Very good. Well, at this point, I'd like to turn it back over to Nina to help close out our event today. Nina, what's up? Hey, Kevin, what a great informative session today. Um, so the audience, if you're interested in learning more about different types of courses and educational material, I would say join AIM Plus today because it offers information professionals a robust collection of educational content and enables you to foster personal and professional connections with a buzzing community. So we offer the freedom to experience all of AIM's training for as long as you need it. Monthly or annual subscriptions are available today. And as we bring this webinar to a close, a few last minute reminders. We have recorded this webinar so you can catch anything you wanna hear again in a recap email that'll be sent within 24 hours. A link to the resources for this webinar was put in the chat. You'll find a copy of this presentation as well as additional resources through that link. Also, don't forget to take our feedback survey and let us know how we did. A big thank you to our underwriters, Microsoft. Without support from our solution providers, we wouldn't be able to bring you free educational material like this webinar today. And before we wrap up, I'd just like to ask Lori if you have any last minute comments, key takeaways for our audience. I, I just want to thank you for your time again today and uh, suggest that you check out the, the content that is published in the Adoption Hub. If you're looking at ways to get started with Syntex, there are some use cases out there and we'll be publishing a whole slew of new content in January 
that is in preparation now. And just know that you can reach out to us as well. We're happy to help answer questions and connect you either to a partner or to your, to your Microsoft account team. And uh, always willing to, to learn how you might want to take advantage of these features. And just stay tuned. There's a, so much more coming. And really being able to tie all of these content services into a very rich set of business flows is the key to all of this. And so um, thank you again. And I hope we can come back and you know share some of the new stuff in 2023. Absolutely. And what about you, Kevin? What's your feedback and takeaway? Well, this has been a great session today. And as we've talked about most recently here on our webinars, you know, the, the scope and the paradigm of information management, records management is changing. It can be a struggle to keep up. It can be a struggle to, to manage and organize and leverage content at scale. And content AI is exciting. Content AI is, is an exciting new development that help can help us transform how we create and process and manage and leverage leverage content. So I was so pleased to hear from Lori and James today. And so I'm looking forward to hearing more from Microsoft about Syntex as we move forward into 2023. Absolutely. Thanks again for joining us today, everyone. This is Nina from AIM saying, see you next time. Take care, everyone.